Hi, welcome to Chef Tips UK with me, Chef Ricky. If you're brand new here, hit that subscribe button. Today we are cooking a chicken tikka masala. Kinda has its roots in India, but apparently it was created right here in the UK when someone asked, I think the, the story goes, someone ordered chicken tikka and they wanted a sauce with it. And the story goes, they got the chicken tikka, chucked a can of tomato soup in it, boom, chicken tikka masala was born. And apparently that's the story, but obviously it's all rumour. Today we're going to be doing my take on the classic chicken tikka masala. So, first thing I'm going to do is make the chicken tikka. So I've got some chicken breast here, I've got a few nice spices. So, yeah, into this bowl, we're going to be adding some garlic and some ginger. I think I've um, talked about this before. Ginger, really awkward. You don't want that skin. No, no on the skin. So all we're going to do is take a spoon of all things and we're just going to scrape it. You can use a peeler, but the peeler will take a lot of the ginger off as well. So all you're going to do is just literally with a spoon and just scrape off the skin of the ginger. As you can see, it's very easy, it's very simple, really good technique though. Um, you know, if the skin is something that puts you off using fresh ginger, I recommend this technique. Right, so, once your ginger's all grated, just get that skin, drop it in a little food bowl, and then all we're gonna do with this is grate it. So, get a grater, you want a fine grate, not the big one. The sort you'd use for sort of like parmesan cheese rather than cheddar cheese and it'll literally just go through that grater like butter and there we go so that's about an inch's worth of grated fresh ginger into the bowl the next step garlic we want to grate this as well to get it out of the skin back of the side of the knife onto the garlic and just slightly press just like that and the skin should just peel away that easy really simple so once your garlic's peeled same with the ginger straight through the grater on the fine grate and you kind of want to hold it with the roots away like this little bit of root here you don't want that get rid of that and then same for this one just through the grater, dropping it everywhere as you can see. We'll uh, just edit that bit out though, you won't see that in final cut. Once all the garlic's grated, same with the ginger, into the bowl. What you can do is then little bits that are left over, get them in there as well. You, your hands will get covered and it smells like garlic, really strong, cold water. If you've got garlic on your hands, you should always wash your hands with cold water. There's another little Chef Tips UK secret for you there. Right, so now we're gonna start with the spices. So, all I've got here is sort of chili powder, paprika, cumin, turmeric, and garam masala. Really easy to pick up. And what you wanna try and do, is get a spoon that fits into the jar. So, once you've found a spoon that fits into the jar, we're just going to go, you know, a steady, because it's quite a small teaspoon this, you know, heap teaspoon of everything. So that's teaspoon of chilli powder, teaspoon of paprika, teaspoon of cumin, teaspoon of turmeric, off and just a teaspoon of garam masala. I think all garam masala is is basically just a, um, a mix of spices. It's just going to add a bit of depth to it. Um, I mean it's got all sorts in it. Coriander seeds, cumin seeds, ginger, fennel, pepper, uh, caraway seeds, cinnamon, cloves, cardamom, celery, nutmeg. So it's just a really delicate blend of a load of spices and it just saves you a load of hassle rather than getting, you know, that was about, you know, 10, 15 spices there. So once we've got all them spices in, lemon. All we're going to do with the lemon, we just want the juice. So I'm going to take it like that and like that. We're just left with that bit there. We don't really need that. 
these seats here, this is just a really quick, easy way. Obviously, you can sort of cut it in half and then squeeze it over your hands to catch the seeds, but this is just proper easy because you don't have to worry about seeds because obviously, you see there, there's no seeds in there. Give that a really good squeeze into there. So that's the juice of one lemon, straight in there. Now what we're going to do with this, just give it a little mix up. And it's kind of, we're kind of just forming this really nice curry paste at the minute. And it's not the most appetising looking thing right now, but I can assure you it is really nice. So what we're going to do is just paste that in a little bit. Just really work them spices together. And then I've got yogurt here, some just, just some Greek natural yogurt, this is 500 grams, I'm just going to put about half of that in there. So, I mean, I'm not measuring it out, it's just sort of roughly 250 grams of yogurt. The rest we will use to finish the actual tikka masala sauce off later on. So, once your yogurt's in there, you're just going to give it a mix up. I mean, you don't have to use a whisk or anything. I'm just using a spoon here. So once it's mixed up, it should be left with this really nice sort of paste. That is our tikka marinade. So, put that to the side. Obviously, it wouldn't be a chicken tikka masala without this. But I've just got like a breast in half of chicken here. Obviously, adapt the recipe for however many people you're cooking for. Um, I'm just, this is sort of basically a two-person recipe. Um, the marinade will probably stretch a bit further though. So, all we're going to do is we're going to just halve that chicken breast there. So that was literally just butterfly in it. And then we're going to cut down the centre. And we don't want the chicken too small. We just sort of want some nice diced. You can buy it pre-diced if you want. Same again with this one. That bit here, we're just gonna take that bit off. Into the food waste. We're gonna cut down there, open it up. Again here, just open it all up so it's the sort of same sort of thickness. And then sort of anyhow, any way you sort of really wanna cut it, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, you're just literally dicing the chicken. It, it's not rocket science, it doesn't matter how it's diced, as long as it's diced really. So, once that's diced, we're going to just add it to this tikka marinade here. And then, give our hands a wash, give our boards and knives a wash, and we'll mix it in. Right, so once we're all cleaned up, it literally we're just mixing it in it, it's not rocket science we're just mixing all that yogurt in and what that's going to do it's going to seep into the chicken give the chicken a really nice flavor chicken is quite a bland meat but you know it takes on to spices really well and it will absorb all this be really nice so once that's all mixed in should look similar to this we're just going to cling film that up bang it in the fridge minimum of four hours ideally you want to leave it overnight but four hours is good enough right so the chickens in the fridge that's marinating really nicely we're going to start on the sauce itself so a nice frying pan here we're just going to get that on a sort of medium to high heat what we're going to do is going to make our own sort of garam masala now um so we're just going to add it all to a bowl because it's a bit easier then. So, I mean, it's quite similar to the actual tikka itself. We're going to go a teaspoon of chilli powder. Obviously, if you want it hotter or less spicier, you can use less or more um, of the chilli. A teaspoon of paprika. A teaspoon of cumin. A teaspoon of turmeric a teaspoon of garam masala and a teaspoon of coriander. So 
This is our own little sort of garam masala here, just a mixture of spices. So we're just going to give that a little mix. We've got this pan heating up, um, only sort of like medium. We're going to go in there with a bit of olive oil. Obviously, more traditionally, you can use like ghee, which is clarified butter, but I'm just going to use olive oil because it's one of my favourite things. So. Into that, we're gonna go with this mixture. We're just gonna sort of lightly fry it up before we add anything else to it. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna absorb all that olive oil. And what you wanna do is just leave it to sort of cook out. When you cook the spices, it sort of intensifies them a bit. It just sort of brings them to life. It can be a little bit bland before you cook them. So once you've got all the spices nicely cooked there, we're going to go in here with a chopped onion. Just some into some really kind of small dice. We're going to turn this down really low. We're only going to cook it low. To that, we're going to now add a, a few. I've got, I think, like about four. Just some dried bay leaf. If you've got fresh, fresh is always better. But it's a bit harder to get hold of. Um, so yeah, in with some bay leaves in there, and then I've got about an inch of ginger and two garlic cloves, similar to the tikka marinade, I've just grated them, and I'm just going to add them to it. And then we're just going to stir them in, and it smells really nice. To that, we're also going to add some lemon juice. So just have like a really nice sort of zing to the dish. I think it really helps bring the curry out. Does the old uh, lemon juice. Cook this out for about five minutes. Right, so this has been cooking for about five minutes now. Just, just getting the onion nice and soft. Just letting all them flavours sort of infuse together. I've got a kilogram here of sieved tomatoes. You can use like chopped tins tomatoes, but I kind of prefer the cartons of sieved tomatoes. So I'm just going to go in there with that. I'm just going to bring the heat up a little bit. Right, so this has come up to the boil. I've just turned it down. Um, so we're just going to leave it just to sort of simmer for about half an hour. Um, just let all like reduce the sauce down a bit. Just let all them flavours sort of build together and cook out into the tomatoes. So yeah, we'll come back in half an hour. And we'll see what it's like. Right, so I moved this um, curry sauce onto a little stove because it was just splashing everywhere. Um, all I'm doing here is the bay leaves, obviously they're not very edible. Um, they've kind of done their job, um, letting, like just infusing, they just have like a really nice aroma to the uh, sauce. So what we're gonna do, is we're just gonna have a flick through and see if we can take some of these bay leaves out. Right, so yeah, um, I've took the bay leaves out, I'll put like four in, so I've took the four out. I was meant to say to you, when, you, uh, when I put the bay leaves in, always count how many you put in. Obviously, if you want, you can just sieve this and like sieve the onions and stuff out, but I prefer to keep them in, like, give a little bit of texture to the sauce. Um, so if you get down here, you can see that it's reduced quite a bit. We've got this really nice thick sauce. All I'm gonna do is I've got a bit of fresh sea salt here. Give me a little pinch of sea salt. We don't need pepper in there, because um, we've already got the spices in there. All that's gonna do, Bring the tomatoes alive a bit. The Greek yogurt we had left over from the tikka marinade, we're just going to add that to it. So we're going to just add a couple of spoons of the Greek yogurt, and we're just going to stir that in. It's just going to give it a really nice creamy finish. So if you come up to me, you see all that sauce is in there, and it's starting to look like a tikka. We're just going to give it a little try. It 
banging. It's banging really nice. And that Greek yogurt just gives it that. It sort of like tones it down a little bit. And it gives it this really nice creamy finish. Just what you want in a tikka. So we're just going to leave that there on low just to simmer down. I'm going to start talking about rice because obviously every curry needs to be served with rice. So I've got 200 grams here, 100 grams of portion. I'm going to put it in the saucepan. I'm going to fill it up with cold water. And then I'm going to let that sit for five minutes and sieve it off just to get rid of excess starch. This is like a, a kind of really cheaty way of doing rice. They'd probably kill me for this in India, but it, 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 it just makes cooking rice really easy, really simple. Right, so the water's gone really cloudy, and that's all the starch coming out. So what we're going to do is just leave that for about five minutes. Right, so I've got the chicken. All we're going to do, I'm going to cut this. And this has been marinating for a good couple of hours now looking really nice obviously in india they would cook these in the i forgot the name of the oven really bad i should have done my research um, and they're basically these big underground clay ovens and they like skewer it and cook it in that really ferocious heat i've not got one you've probably not got one so we're going to just try and recreate that with a really hot frying pan so we've got a really good non-stick frying pan here it's on the heat, we're going to get it really nice and hot. Right, so, we're just going to give this chicken a nice little mix. And I mean, look at that. I mean, it looks really good. It smells beautiful. So, you can obviously put it in with your hands. I'm going to just use some tongs so my hands don't get covered in chicken tikka marinade. Like I said, this uh, chicken tikka sauce is still on. Just cooking, just simmering away. Because um, what we're going to do is we're going to sear the chicken then just add it to the pan and let it finish cooking in that sauce. Really nice. So my pan's getting nice and hot now. I'm going to go with a little glug of olive oil. Like I said, this is a, a traditional way you'd cook chicken tikka. But, I mean, I haven't got a, a clay oven in, in my back garden anywhere. If you have, use that obviously right so my pan's still getting really nice and hot this rice i think that's been about 10 minutes five minutes now I'm just gonna use a sieve and just get rid of that water and then we're just gonna place it back in there so i've just strained it off placed it back in there and i'm just gonna fill it up again i'm just gonna leave that We'll cook the chicken and then we'll get the rice cooking. So this pan's really nice and hot now. So all I'm going to do, this chicken to mix up, is I'm just going to drop this chicken into here. Right, so I've added a few. I'm obviously not going to overcrowd the pan. And this will cook really quickly. And get a really nice colour on them. Like I said, we're not going to thoroughly cook them because we're going to finish them off in the sauce. So just about a minute each side is all you want. You just turn that over there. That's how good my non-stick pan is. That's just come off. That's what we want. We want some nice char on them. So we can make out that we've cooked them in an oven. So we're just going to give them a minute on that side as well. Smells lovely. Can we have a look at this sauce here? Really nice, really authentic. Right, so once these got a nice colour on, we're just going to drop them into the sauce. And then we'll just scrape off this. Really nice little trick here. Get your frying pan, bit of kitchen roll, and just give it a wipe. 
obviously be really careful because it's going to be really hot and then you're ready to start again then for your next batch I would cook it in batches you don't want to overcrowd the pan right so if you get down here all that chicken has been seared off and it's all in the pan it's starting to look really like a chicken tikka masala really really nice the rice if you remember we let it soak in cold water for five minutes strained it off filled it back up with cold water bang it's on the heat now on full and we're going to bring this up to the boil and simmer it for about 12 minutes to the rice is really nice and soft and fluffy all you want to do is just get a spoon in there and just give it a stir every few minutes just it just helps the rice like not stick to each other because we want some really nice fluffy rice uh, I've got balsamati here you can use whatever rice you want balsamati is kind of like my favorite so I find it's get you get a better texture with it than sort of long grain um, so yeah balsamati rice boom bring it up to the boil and we'll get this curry on the go right so my rice here has come up to the boil I've just turned it down onto a simmer if you boil rice with water it's just going to go everywhere so as soon as it comes up to the boil get it down um, I've been giving it a little stir see it's looking really nice look still, a, still not cooked yet five more minutes that'll be done if we go to the chicken tikka here that is looking lovely look really nice really nice so yeah five minutes and we'll be done right so this rice lovely and soft now and as you can see I boiled it with that much water it's not sort of gone all down this is my little cheating rice method so all I'm going to do is drop that into a corinda if you get a look at that lot, it's still really nice, soft and fluffy. The chicken tikka, um, I've had a little feel of this and I'm the chicken, I know the chicken's done. So we're going to take that off the heat, just to finish it off. Some freshly chopped coriander. Just adds a really nice fragrance. A little bit of fresh coriander on top of that. And there you have it. Homemade chicken tikka masala. It doesn't take long. It takes about an hour. Just got to make sure you get that chicken marinated for at least four hours. So yeah. Let's just get in there. And try it. I can't wait to try this chicken. So nice. Oh, really nice that is. And that sauce, and that sauce is divine. So there you have it, chicken tikka masala. Probably the most famous curry in the entire world. Give it a try at home. Let me know how you get on. If you like this video, Hit that subscribe button guys, and until next time, keep on chefing.